Hi, so this is the first part of magnetic fields of transatoms, spin nucleide electronic condensate by G. B. Mishinsky. So the original paper is available online at unconventionalscience.org. Uh, that's U N C O N V dash science.org. And uh, it's kind of like in two columns uh, as many papers are published. However, when I've translated this into English, I've just got it in single column. I've done the best job I can. I'm hoping that people out there with a better understanding of Russian can fix some of the problems in here and maybe make a uh, more faithful reproduction of this in the, in the two column sense uh, for um, sort of general distribution. Uh, however, you can link to the original presentation here uh, and uh, what I've done in this presentation is I've highlighted in bold or in larger text um, things that I think are really quite important for people to grasp. And sometimes uh, when I think they're really, really important, I've uh, highlighted them in red. So I'm going to split this into a number of presentations so that I can upload it easily. And uh, hopefully it doesn't break my uh, memory card. And uh, I'll start off by uh, uh, reading the abstract. So, um, the calculation of magnetic fields for transatoms with different nuclear charge and different co numbers of uh, Cooper pairs with S equals 1, i.e. bosons, is carried out. Uh, Mishinsky uh, says that transatoms are a new state of matter with the name spin nucleide electron uh, condensate. The magnitudes of the magnetic fields of the transatoms allow them to be attracted to each other. When two transatoms converge, their electronic shells are socialized. As a result, a dual core system is created. Subsequently, other transatoms can join this system. Thus, a multinuclear system, the transmolecule, is formed. The motions of electrons, nuclei, and nucleons in the nuclei in this transmolecule are rigidly correlated. Such a strong correlation leads to the synchronization of all types of interactions in the trans molecule. For example, the exchange of nucleons between nuclei must be synchronized with electroweak interactions, proton transformations into neutrons, or conversely, neutrons into protons. So, uh, essentially, what uh, is being uh, set forth here is uh, Mishinsky is saying that there are two types of um, low energy nuclear reactions and the first is cold nuclear fusion uh, and this is kind of like normal fusion type uh, products and, and in feedstocks um, uh, and there is the second type of low energy nuclear reaction uh, which is a transmutation of chemical elements and so he's saying that the the CNN, the cold nuclear fusion uh, reactions, include reactions involving hydrogen or deuterium and a basic element, for example, palladium, zirconium, nickel, titanium, lithium, etc. These reactions can occur spontaneously without external influence. Uh, in a solid, they occur preferably in samples having the size in the order of a few nanometers. This is kind of the sort of um, uh, thing that Edmund Storms would say. Uh, you can get these kind of uh, standard fusions, but also low energy uh, nuclear fusions. It's slightly different, but um, Mashinsky is uh, separating out very clearly the the, the notion that the, the, there is another type uh, of uh, reaction other than a cold nuclear fusion, and that is low energy transmutation of chemical elements. Uh, so the reactions of a net or transmutation. Uh, uh, reactions are carried out for all chemical elements, beginning with hydrogen and occur as a rule involving a large number of atomic nuclei. Net reactions include both fusion and nuclear decay. They proceed only as a result of external influence. Transmutation reactions predominantly occur in melts, in solutions and in dense gases, i.e. on free atoms. So. This is consistent with many of the observations. So uh, Norris Peary w was saying you don't get the reactions uh, occurring unless it's at least molten. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously in uh, the recent Parkamov uh, reactors running over at 1700 degrees with just nickel and hydrogen, obviously the nickel is molten. And so this uh, meets this criteria. 
Such separation by types of low energy nuclear reactions is associated with the difference in the physical processes that occur in them. For this reason, each type of reaction requires its own theory. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at some of the areas I highlighted, uh, talk around them, and split it into, up into uh, some um, uploads. And you can really de delve into this in your own time. There's so much to get through in this. And on the 2nd of October, this uh, I hopefully will be presented here in Sochi. And uh, I'll get a chance to speak to the author. And so I must get this out of the door. <laughs> Okay, so properties of transmutation reactions, prohibitions on their passage and comments. The main property of reactions of low energy transmutation is that in their products appear foreign chemical elements that are absent in the initial material prior to the beginning of these reactions. The resulting isotopes of the elements are non-radioactive. In addition, the products of the reaction exhibit an increased yield of certain elements of groups of elements uh, and another ratio of isotopes of chemical elements other than natural. And so he gives a whole bunch of references here. Now, the references uh, I haven't included in this uh, translation that I've done, but again, you can go to the original uh, presentation, which is, uh, sorry, the original uh, paper, which is online, and the references are all given there. Okay. From this it follows that in the process of net, this is uh, transmutation reactions, uh, lone gene transmutation reactions, the exchange of nucleons between nuclei takes place and the ratio of protons and neutrons varies. The latter means that the transmutation reactions, uh, atomic electrons and neutrinos, antineutrinos participate. So uh, you're getting conversion of protons to neutrons and neutrons to protons. Um, uh, thus, in transmutation reactions, along with strong re interactions, electroweak interactions occur. Another indication that strong nuclear interactions occur in the transmutation reactions is the registration in these processes of excessive thermal, in some experiments, electrical energy, uh, the magnitude of which, which cannot be explained by chemical reactions. So he then goes on to explain some things that need to be uh, present for this to occur. <clears throat> Moreover, the absence in the product of the transmutation reactions uh, of gamma radiation means that electroweak processes occur between the ground states of the nuclei. And the absence during the course of, the pro uh, of these uh, transmutation reactions of fast electrons associated with the conversion of neutrons into protons means that the electron pro electrons produced in this process do not emerge from the atom, but fill up its electronic levels. Okay, these are very interesting. This is kind of accounting for a couple of the um, uh, sort of uh, miracles uh, that uh, Lena, in terms of transmutation reactions, uh, seem to accomplish. Consequently, the conditions under discussion require that the electronic structure of atoms in the transmutation process change radically. Atoms must turn into what he calls transatoms. At the same time, the structure of the nucleus should not undergo significant changes. It is noted that in transmutation reactions that take place in a relatively light medium al uh, along the elements, along with extraneous light elements, uh, heavy elements are obtained that cannot be obtained in paired nuclear reactions. So we've observed lead production, so has uh, Leclerc, so has uh, uh, Hutchison, uh, so has... Um, uh, Ralkar, and so has actually uh, Parkamov in his experiments. So they're getting heavy elements being produced that don't exist in the starting materials. In addition, in some experimental methods, the yield of products of transmutation reactions reaches tens of percents of the total mass of the condensed medium. So it would appear that we were getting like 50-60% uh, of uh, uh, lead being produced uh, out of um, Suhas Ralkar's ultrasonic uh, uh, reactor. A fuel processor, and there were lumps of, um, for instance, 70-something uh, percent gold um, and also lead uh, uh, from Adamenko. Adamenko has also observed large production of lead. Uh, this is, which is commensurate with the yield of products in, uh, sorry, it says, uh, um, tens of percent of the total mass of the condensed medium, which is incommensurate with the yield of products in nuclear reactions.
So just basically saying <laughs> this is not a normal reaction. Uh, thus, it should be assumed that during transmutation, many atoms simultaneously interact and correspondingly many nuclei. Now, with the uh, transmutation tables that we did um, uh, using the Parkamov uh, data sets, he had to really assume that uh, it was one, uh, 2 to 1, 1 to 2, or 2 to 2, just because it's just overly complicated. You've already got uh, half a million plus uh, cases just in those scenarios. Uh, and pushing that out to uh, <laughs> three it becomes ridiculously complicated. So it's this is what I was saying that it's it's just a a basic kind of uh, interpretation uh, as a guide. Anyway, uh, uh, basically this proposes such a, a multinuclear interaction. However, the probability of polyatomic collisions is extremely small even in the absence of Coulomb barrier. So, you know, when, when you're doing hot fusion, you're trying to smash two things together and overcoming the Coulomb barrier kinetically. Uh, and the, the, the likelihood of an instantaneous time in which three or more atoms collide simultaneously uh, is what he's saying, is, is basically vanishingly small. Uh, and, and so uh, some other process must be doing... Uh, this sort of what I would re was referring to uh, earlier in the year as packing it into a, a, a box and then it, the reaction occurring within that box. The latter means that during transmutation, trans atoms should be attracted to each other and the structure of their electron shells should automatically lead to the convergence of nuclei to the distances of the action of nuclear forces and the beginning of nuclear transformation processes. So I think this is very important here. A wide variety of physical experiments in which transmutation reactions occur suggest the existence of a characteristic object that is the same for all types of experiments. Such an object, he calls this uh, the capsule, uh, which arises as a result of the energy impact on the condensed medium and which, in my opinion, is a plasma formation. So is it condensed plasmoid? Is it an exotic vacuum object? These sort of plasma objects that... Uh, uh, shoulders uh, had observed and that we actually have samples that came from Hutchison of these uh, um, ball lightning type affected materials. Yeah. He says, in my opinion, is a plasma formation with a strong with strong uh, electromagnetic field inside. Capsule contains a large number of atoms inside itself. Under the influence of a strong electromagnetic field inside capsules, atoms are transformed into trans atoms. So uh, I'm not entirely clear on this and I'm going to question him tomorrow. But is he saying that uh, there's these trans atoms inside and and those are contained within this uh, plasmoid uh, uh, and uh, the plasmoid facilitates the production of of the trans uh, atoms uh, that then uh, coalesce to form trans molecules the size of the capsules is estimated to be uh, 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus uh, uh, 3 centimeters well um you know it, it would appear that Potentially, they can grow much larger. I don't know. Um, and again, I want to uh, question them on this. As a result, as is known, the process of transmutation is accompanied by an unknown radiation that leaves strange tracks in photographic emulsions on metal sections and which, upon interaction with matter, changes its structure and chemical composition. Perhaps it is the capsules that originate in the con a condensed medium moving inside and outside it uh, that are the strange radiation that is registered in many experiments. Okay, so uh, he's suggesting that the strange radiation that we've observed a lot in the last uh, couple of years or 18 months, uh, and that uh, hopefully we're going to have a lot of discussion uh, at uh, Sochi, uh, is something to do with these uh, capsules. Uh, I would agree that um, uh, they must have some uh, neutral uh, abilities because we've observed them traveling through various types of uh, plastic like um, we did when uh, we were looking at these uh, strange radiation tracks from Echo. So the material is in here. It's coming out of a, a largely metallic block. It's going through this plastic. Obviously, it's, there's some effect here. Uh, so it's actually coming out of the fuel. So the fuel is here. And uh, it's coming out of there through this plastic, through air, uh, and then, you know, it's affecting this plastic, and then it went through that plastic, uh, through more air, through some uh, uh, sort of electrical tape, and 
uh, in, through some plastic and uh, IR filter and into the CCD to produce the, these uh, strange radiation tracks on the CCD in the Logitech 910C uh, uh, using Cosmic Ray Finder. Um, so uh, they can uh, <laughs> operate in a sort of um, um, kind of uh, <laughs> like like a, a neutron to a certain degree. It may be that the the um, the charged array on the CCD is quite good at capturing them although this took many hours but it was with a with a non-active sample I mean not not actively being excited it's just like decaying um, uh, or, or the uh, strange radiation is just coming out of its own accord rather than being stimulated to um, that the the CCD or the uh, MOS uh, whatever it is um, because it's electrically stimulated uh, may actually cause the the strange radiation to break down as it as it comes in rather than to pass straight through. So it may actually be a good way of detecting them. Anyhow, um, this is very important. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, probably uh, stop that there. Oh no, I want to uh, talk about here. Uh, I've been talking a lot about the importance of uh, Cooper pairs uh, and that maybe that the H minus uh, in um, uh, Piantelli or the Negaton uh, from uh, um, uh, Peary or the E minus P E minus from Little or uh, the Magnon I think it is from Centilli they're all basically the same thing and I've been speculating that if it was normally two electrons around a proton the, their orbits would just be like miles away um, but uh, if they were actually a Cooper pair uh, they would, uh, you know, may potentially explain some of the observations we had with uh, Chalani wires lowering their resistance and with um, the uh, wires also exhibiting uh, maybe uh, some electrical production or something similar. There's been all kinds of things going on uh, over the period of our testing uh, Chalani wires. But anyway, he's saying here, the hypothetical possibility of electronic condensate in the immediate vicinity of the nucleus due to pairing of electrons in Cooper pairs with spin equal to unity uh, S equals 1. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to uh, upload this video and uh, uh, throw out, um, I've recorded another one.